Hello friends, it's James Calm, your half-assed reporter, back for the 15th season of the Calm Report and the Rough Cuts. And we're in Dumbo. I'm gonna pop into Minor Space see an exhibition. A show by Leslie Roberts, hey Rosanna, how things are here at Minus Space. piece which is the title piece of the show. This is titled How Things Are Not Easy Answers. No Easy Answers. 2019. Acrylic gesso and colored pencil. Graphite ink on gesso panel. Well I've known Leslie for probably about going on 20 years now. I started looking at her work when she was showing at a little gallery called Eyewash in Williamsburg. This is called Villanella 2019. Acrylic gouache, colored pencil, graphite ink on gessoed panels. So I've seen Leslie kind of develop this whole idea of the, the code and uh, well as I've said before I'm a fan of text and I like coloristic abstraction I'll read a little bit from the uh, press release Leslie Roberts new rule-based paintings reflect on how things are in my life and in the world and our visual verbal hybrids containing handwritten lists of words and phrases that are algorithmically translated into geometric color structures. According to the artist, lists of the most basic forms of writing and Robert's collection catalogs ambient language from diverse sources such as signage, travel directions, text messages, product labels, acronyms, email, licensing agreements and field guides. Uh, yeah, we'll take a close-up look at this. This is titled Birds of New York by Color. This is on MDF board. <laughs> well, I always like to uh, come in and see what Leslie's working on. One of the things that is always amazing for me is that although Leslie has a very strict list of rules, the kind of uh, variations and changes in design and concept and how that ends up getting turned into a painting is amazing. So a lot 
of people spend time trying to decipher her lists. So uh, you can spend a lot of a lot of time engaging and trying to uh, decode these. It's titled "Hold It As You Hold a Pencil," 2019. by 18. Also, this uh, suite of paintings on this wall here, I think, are some of the largest pieces that Leslie's done. I keep encouraging her to maybe bump up the scale a little bit, and uh, I guess at this rate, in about 10 years, they'll be up to about 36 by 24 inches, maybe. in a certain way also Leslie kind of likes the idea of these almost as pages in a notebook well just as an example of what I was talking about let's just look at these three paintings here and you can see the uh, the differences that Leslie has come up with and as I said this is all dealing with various types of representations of letters and text. It's titled Why. Is this happening? Did I get this? She was up at Yaddo and then maybe somewhere in Virginia. Called Manhattan Avenue. True false. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting the way that Leslie has, uh, you know, limited her palette in this one to more the, uh, blue. 
shoes and turquoise. chart. studio out in Williamsburg slash Bushwick 16 by 20 despite This is a nice one. I like the, uh, the subtle light tones here. touch with their uh, wash. A lot of them have various mediums. We've got graphite, style rules, I before E, except after C. So this is a quick wash, colored pencil, graphite, ink on gesso panel. So this is another black, white, and gray piece. I kind of like these. And uh, also I like the way that she's uh, breaking up the grids into various sizes. It's the last two. Deer 2018, acrylic gouache, color pencil, graphite ink on just a panel, 12 by 9. She actually uh, is pretty good at getting various tones with just the graphite as well. And see attached. Acrylic gouache, colored pencil, graphite ink on just a panel. I love the um, use of the watercolor and the kind of the various levels and the pedibedi of that. Okay, well, we caught up with Leslie Roberts here in the back room. She's relaxed. Tell us a little bit about the show. The light in this space, the light in this space is great. I feel, like, I feel like I am just seeing the show this week, actually. You know, I was curious. I'd, I'd mentioned that you uh, had a couple of residencies. Would you talk a little bit about your I, residencies? I was very lucky. Last year I applied a lot of places and didn't get to any, but this year 
two. So right after teaching, I went to Yado for four months. Yado, how many months? One month. One month, okay. Uh, I got about as much done as seven months in New York. And then I came back here in six weeks, and then I went to BCCA in Virginia, the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts. Um, so it's really, a, it was just, I mean, I've never had that where you get to, you know, I had so much time to sort of plan and think about things and then work so much at Yado, and then when I got to the other place, I could think about what had happened there, you know, and what I was going to bring forward from that, which usually it's like, more typically it's like that you get those chances to work really intensively and end up like nine months later maybe. Right. So that was unusual. And you were saying that also because you had a larger studio that you were able to um, work on a little bit larger scale? I was, I was planning to do it anyway, but it was way, it was far easier to do that, I must say, with, it, with like three tables instead of one and a whole lot of wall space. And you always work on a table, so you're more like writing these paintings, or do you put them on an easel? Or? Well, I kind of lean them against the table. I really don't work on a table. I work with them in my lap, with the big ones. It's you like, hold them in your lap? table or something there. Um, there were some very useful tools, actually. <laughs> Are you going to keep increasing in scale a little bit? I've always said I wanted to encourage you to do a little bit larger work. I just... I'll just i tell you, you've been so supportive that I didn't hear that you say that, but I believe that you did say it. <laughs> um, you weren't one of, there are people who come in and kind of go like, oh, if only these were really great big paintings. So I never got that from me. But I was, I'm very happy with the larger size. I feel like still working as something that you can read but also just more powerful as right. a visual thing. I was thinking that you might have a kind of a feeling like you're working in a notebook or something like that with I some think, of these? Uh, yeah, they're very related. They, they grew out of a bunch of drawings that I've seen, seen some of those. And so, so the, these paintings started out as kind of like how, how a painting could be as close to a page as possible. Right. And, um, and the 18 by 24 size, which is what you the new 24 by 18. I mean, that's the size of, that's actually like a ridiculously standard, hallowed size. For Susan, it's a great size. Of, you know, like I feel like, when did it become, you know, holy that all sketch pads were drawing are 18 by 24? But, so it still feels like a piece of paper, but. The only thing is you're, you're living in New York and there's a whole long tradition of everybody making oh, yeah. huge, so, huge paintings here. There are artists for whom that would be petite. Yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, you were showing me you have a little booklet here of uh, all well, of your I, your texts. Not all of them. I have typed up some of them. I mean, I, I typed up more of them. I just what I wanted to do is I don't want them to feel like required reading. You know? Like I didn't want anyone to feel as if oh my god I have to read all of this stuff. But more like if, if, if someone is curious realizes it's that there. You here, you know, you don't have to puzzle it out. You can just read them up. You know, and I've also said that. I'm into modern poetry, and in a certain way, you could say that a lot of the texts are almost like poetry. What's your ideas and thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would say if they were, if they were, if they were, if they were only standing alone as, as words, I would spend more time refining them. But I think, I think that, that there's something lyrical inherently about making a list. Yes. So. Um, John J. O'Connor. John J. O'Connor, where he was talking about one of my paintings in detail, but one that was, that was about drawing. But in any case, at the end of the essay, which was, I really appreciate it, very, very well said, but then he, he printed the text of the painting in full because I sent it to him. And I was surprised by how much I was touched when he did that. And so I think, I think I probably like the text a little bit more. <laughs> always willing to say. I think I might, I think some part of me worries that people will decide that they have to choose between seeing them and reading them. Right. And also a big part of it is you find, you finding the text. It's not like you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs and spinning the pen in your, Actually, in your I, mouth thinking I, about words. It's, they kind of find you. Kind of, I, but I keep lots of notes. And so when I went to Yado for the first time, they made an Excel sheet. They have an Excel sheet with like pages of you know keywords, 
pages of instructions, pages of, you know, so I, I started so when you my notes into an Excel spreadsheet. When you keep notes, you have a little notebook in your pocket, or do you keep them on your cell phone, or how do you keep your notes? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, in the old days, I had a date book, but now I have a cell phone, so um, in the studio, I mean, I'll write them on graph paper sometimes, but, but I, a lot of them I do collect on my phone. Okay, Leslie Roberts, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. How things are here at Minus Space and Dumbo. Anyway, congratulations. The show looks fantastic. Good luck. James Calm reporting on Leslie Roberts, How Things Are, here at Minus Space and Dumbo. You can like this, share, post it on all your social media websites. You can subscribe, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, and criticisms below. So this is our the beginning of our 15th year, and we want you to keep saying, thank you, Kate. <laughs> oh boy, the Brooklyn Heights ukulele. Ensemble. Okay, thank you. That was beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>